All right, gamers, get ready. We are diving deep into the future, the year 2025 to be exact. You guys send in a ton of articles about the AAA games hitting the shelves that year, and let me tell you, it is going to be insane. We're talking sequels, prequels, even remakes, and of course, brand new IPs. Basically, there's going to be something for everyone. So uh, what's your initial reaction glancing at all this? just how much the industry is evolving. Yeah, we've got developers experimenting with new mechanics and ways of telling stories, but also paying homage to those classics with some really exciting remakes. It really feels like a dynamic time to be a gamer. It really does. <laughs> You know me, I'm always down for a good sequel, so let's start there, with those big names coming back for another round. First off, we gotta talk about Borderlands 4, coming out late 2025. I don't know about you, but I'm already hyped. What's interesting is they're skipping last-gen consoles for this one. Focusing on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X only, it seems like they're really going all in on the power of those systems. Now that's got my brain firing. What kind of changes could that unlock? Even more crazy weapons, environments that react to all the mayhem. Yeah, definitely. More processing power could mean crazy detailed environments, destructible environments even. Imagine buildings crumbling during boss fights, or even using the environment as a weapon itself. Now that is a game changer. Okay, moving on. Next on our sequel list is Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, also coming out in 2025. I absolutely loved the original, the accuracy, the immersion, it was incredible. What are you hoping to see in the sequel? Well, they've mentioned a much bigger world this time around, some cool new combat features, but what I'm really curious about is branching storylines. Like, imagine the impact your decisions could have shaping the fate of Bohemia, and it feels really personal. Yeah, that's what I love about RPGs, right? That feeling of agency, like your choices actually matter. <laughs> okay, up next we have Monster Hunter Wilds. This is more than just a bigger and better sequel. Capcom is promising new monsters, new mechanics, and a whole new story. Are you a Monster Hunter fan? Oh yeah, it's one of those series that demands patience, you know? Like, you gotta master it, but when you do, the payoff is so satisfying. What I'm really curious about is how they balance the new stuff with the core gameplay loop. Gotta attract new players without uh, alienating those hardcore fans who love the challenge. The delicate balance, for sure. Hmm. All right, switching gears to a different kind of challenge now. We've got State of Decay 3 bringing the zombie apocalypse to our consoles sometime in 2025 or 2026. Base building, resource management, tough choices, what's not to love? Yeah, they're really leaning into the horror aspect with this one, I feel like. The trailers have this really dark and visceral feel. So yeah, I think it's gonna be a much more intense experience and, you know, push the players to their limits. I am so ready to be terrified. Last but not least, for our MMO fans out there, Archage Chronicles is launching in 2025. They're promising enhanced combat, uh, more community features, and even richer content for those life skills. What are your thoughts? Well, Archage is known for that sandbox world, you know, where players have a ton of freedom. But it's always a challenge to create a good story while also keeping that player freedom. I'm hopeful, though, this could be a big one for MMO fans. Fingers crossed they find that sweet spot. <laughs> All right, that covers the big sequels on our list. Now, how about a little trip back in time? Let's talk about those prequels that'll shed some light on the backstories of some of our favorite franchises. You know, revisiting those worlds we love and seeing where it all began, that's what I'm really excited about. Prequels? Oh yeah, tell me more. Which one's got you hooked? Well, first off, we've got Gears of War, E-Day. Taking us back to the very beginning, the Locust Horde's first attack. Imagine experiencing Emergence Day, you know, firsthand, the chaos of horror. Oh man, I remember playing the first Gears and being blown away by the atmosphere. But to go back to the very beginning, see how it all unfolds, that could be really powerful. You think they'll change any of the established lore or maybe throw in some twists that could change how we see the main series? It's possible, yeah. Prequels are a great way to expand on what we already know, maybe introduce characters or events that have a ripple effect through the whole timeline. Wouldn't be surprised if they planted some seeds that connect back to the later games in ways we don't expect. My mind's already racing. All right, what else do we have in the prequel department? We've got Mafia the old country, taking us back to Sicily in the early 1900s, gritty origins in the mafia, deep narrative, and they're saying the visuals are stunning. I loved the vibe of the original mafia game. It felt so real, mm. you know, authentic. But there's something about this prequel that's really intriguing. I think you're talking about the fact that they're going with a more linear story structure, which is a bold move these days with everyone obsessed with open world games. That's exactly it. What do you think is behind that decision? 
Well, it tells me they're putting a huge emphasis on the story and the characters. By keeping it linear, they can really control the experience, you know? Hone in on those emotional moments, really make the player feel the weight of those early days of the Mafia. It's classic storytelling, but it can be super effective. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, especially with such a rich historical setting. Yeah. Okay, we've talked about games building on existing stories, but what about those that are bringing classic games back to life? Remakes. Ah, yes, the nostalgia factor is strong with these. Remakes taking those old favorites and giving them a modern makeover. Gothic 1, that was a cult classic back in the day. I know a lot of people are hyped for this remake. What's got you excited about it? They're updating the graphics, of course, bringing the mechanics up to date. But what's really cool is how they're expanding the role-playing elements, giving the NPCs more depth, backstories, motivations, making the world feel more alive. Yeah, it's a great example of modernizing a game without losing what made it special in the first place. Yeah. But there's something else, right? Something they're addressing that was a big issue for fans of the original. Ah, you're talking about the ending. It was pretty controversial, and they're actually changing it for the remake taking all the feedback they've gotten over the years, crafting a more satisfying conclusion. That's awesome to hear. Shows a real respect for the fans. Yeah. All right, now for a remake that has me completely baffled. Doom. The Dark Ages. Doom, but medieval. I mean, it's a bold move, but can they really pull it off? Definitely unexpected. But think about it. Fast-paced action, demonic enemies, over-the-top power fantasy, those are the core elements of Doom. And those could translate surprisingly well to a medieval setting. We've seen some glimpses of new weapons, you know, enchanted swords, crossbows, what look like demonic knights and gargoyles. It's a cool mix of classic doom and dark fantasy. The more I hear, the more intrigued I get. Okay, I'm sold. <laughs> Let's talk about something completely new now. Brand new IPs that could really shake things up. Uncharted territory. Yeah, this is where it gets really exciting. Exploring new worlds, experiencing new stories, and potentially seeing gameplay mechanics that could change whole genres. Hit me with your top pick. Which new world are you most eager to explore? For me, it's gotta be Crimson Desert. Open world action adventure, focus on story and character, but what sets it apart is the emphasis on player choice and real consequences, you know? They're saying your decisions will have a meaningful impact on the world and the story. It's a bold claim. Give me some examples. What kind of choices are we talking about? Imagine siding with different factions, each with their own beliefs and goals. Your decision could decide who comes out on top, which regions prosper, maybe even whether entire settlements survive or get wiped out. And these aren't simple either choices. They could have effects that play out over time, you know? Branching out in ways you don't expect. It's a truly dynamic experience. That level of depth is insane. Sign me up. What else is there on the new IP front? Get ready for this one. Belle Epoque France, but with a dark fantasy twist. Claire Obscure. Expedition 33. Turn-based combat mixed with real-time elements, mystery, and intrigue. Okay, you had me at Belle Epoque, France. I love anything with historical vibes and a touch of the supernatural. So tell me about the gameplay. From what I've seen, it's a really cool blend of classic RPG elements and a more modern action-oriented approach. You'll have to plan your moves strategically, but also react quickly to what's happening. So it's a system that rewards both planning and quick thinking. Love that combination. It could appeal to both strategy fans and those who like a little more action. Uh -huh. Okay, what else? If you like things a little creepy, Reanimal might be for you. Survival horror with a mix of platforming and some truly chilling encounters. Imagine a world that's both strange and unsettling, solving puzzles, and try not to jump out of your skin every five seconds. I'm getting chills already. What kind of scares are we talking? Mm. Jump scares, psychological horror, give me the details. It's giving me those limbo vibes, you know? Minimalist art style, constant sense of dread, but this time they're really going for the horror narrative, building suspense and psychological unease. These developers have a knack for atmosphere and making you think, so I have high hopes for this one. I'm both excited and terrified, gotta be honest. <laughs> Definitely playing this one with the lights on. All right, last new IP before we move on to the big guns. All right, ready to face the machines, Terminator, survivors, dropping you right into that post-apocalyptic world we all know from the movies. Scavenge for resources, build your weapons, and fight to survive against Skynet. Oh, and the best part, you can go it alone or team up with friends in co-op. Co-op in a Terminator game, that's awesome. <laughs> I think like facing down a robot apocalypse with your buddies. Yeah. But what about the open world? How much freedom will players have? That's a big question, right? Will it be a huge sandbox, explore at your own pace, build bases, scavenge, that kind of thing, or more focused on missions and objectives? 
Either way, it's got the potential to be a really thrilling Terminator survival experience. Can't wait to see what they do with it. Okay, we've covered a lot, from awesome sequels to classic remakes and bold new worlds. But now it's time to talk about the games that could truly dominate the gaming world in 2025. The Titans. Ready for this? Oh, absolutely. The Titans are coming and they could change everything. I am mm -hmm. so ready for this. Let's start with Dragon Quest XII. The Flames of Fate. This isn't just another sequel. This sounds like a complete reinvention. Darker story, more mature themes, maybe even moving away from the classic turn-based combat. What's the deal with this one? It's a huge shift for the series, for sure. I think they're trying to reach a broader audience, you know, maybe even people who haven't really been into JRPGs before. That darker tone, the potential change in combat, could bring in players looking for something a little more intense, a little more challenging. But can they do that without alienating those diehard fans who love that classic Dragon Quest formula? That is the big question. It's a tough balance to strike. We'll have to wait and see. But one thing's for sure, Dragon Quest XII is going to be a big deal. No doubt about it. Okay, now for the game that needs no introduction. The one we've all been waiting for, GTA 6. It's officially happening fall 2025, and the hype is unreal. What are you expecting from this one? Well, Rockstar has a reputation for pushing the limits, right? Yeah. Open world gameplay, storytelling, they create these worlds that feel so alive, characters you love or hate, stories that stick with you. I expect nothing less from GTA 6. Think about the possibilities. New city to explore, new characters, those crazy rock star moments that just leave you speechless. Any theories about where they might take us this time? What kind of story they might tell? That's the beauty of it. It's all speculation right now. Rockstar is good at keeping secrets, which just makes it even more exciting. But knowing them, I wouldn't be surprised if they tackle some tough real world issues, you know, social commentary, but still with that over the top action and satire that they're known for. It's going to be wild. You know, even with all these amazing AAA games coming out, I'm always excited to see what the indie scene is doing. Absolutely. Indie devs, they're the ones taking risks, experimenting, and sometimes they come up with the most innovative and creative games out there. We saw that with Reanimal, Claire Obscure, both from indie studios, both pushing boundaries. Yeah, it's a good reminder that there's always something new to discover, something that could surprise you, become your next favorite game. That's what makes this such an awesome time to be a gamer, right? We've got those huge blockbuster experiences, but also these smaller, more personal journeys. It really is a golden age for gaming, and I, I can't wait to see what the future holds. Me neither. We've covered so much today sequels, prequels, remakes, brand new IPs, and every single one has something unique to offer. 2025 is going to be a year that changes gaming forever, and I for one am stoked to be along for the ride. It's going to be an amazing year, that's for sure. And remember, this is just a glimpse into the future. Who knows what other incredible games are out there just waiting to be discovered. So true. Now we want to hear from you. Which games on this list have you hyped? What features are you looking forward to the most? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to The Deep Dive for more awesome discussions on the world of gaming and beyond. Thanks for joining us on this journey into the future of gaming. Until next time, game on.